Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Weekly Awakening Podcast. It is your host, Cosmic Colleen, back with another weekly astrology update. I want to remind everyone to follow me on social media, Cosmic Colleen, 1C across the board, Colleen Dixon. So that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, definitely where I'm at. I say follow me because if you want to keep day-to-day updated, I usually post more about the transits of the week. I do this, I sit with this, I write out what I expect to feel or see during the week, and then as I go throughout the week living my life, I end up noticing more things about the transit. All I do is think about astrology. Everything that's happening is astrology, so I usually pop up a quick video, so definitely want to check that out. I want to remind everyone who keeps supporting my podcast, thank you. The best way to support the Weekly Awakening podcast is to rate this, review it, subscribe it, post about it on social media, and send this to a friend to listen to. Say, hey, I think you might like this podcast. Go ahead and check it out. And everyone, I know a lot of you, a lot of my listeners continue to do that. And thank you. I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys. And just the feedback of like, hey, I love this episode. This was a good episode. Or even commenting on some of the videos or social media about what you got from this episode or how this played out into you. I really love that. So that's a great way to support this show. I hope everyone had a good week and a good weekend this past. I'm, of course, I want to talk about my weekend uh, and a good 4th of July, even though it doesn't really feel like we should be celebrating this year, but I'm not going to talk about that. This weekend, this past weekend, I talked about it. We had Mars... Um, Squaring Pluto and then actually trining Pluto. I hope I didn't mess that up. And then Mercury squaring Neptune and the way that that played out for all of us. And we're going to talk about Mercury too, so I want to go back in. But okay, so here is the funny story. Hold on. Was it was it also squaring Pluto? Pluto's in Capricorn. Um, yeah. So, so here's the funny story about this weekend. So this weekend I go away and I go down to a friend's house and they have a house on the Chesapeake Bay. And they're all kind of experienced boaters. I'm not. I have bar- I love boats, but I've not been on them too long. And we get there in the afternoon and our friends say there's this big storm happening up here in the northeast uh, above Maryland and below um, like the Philadelphia area around there. And they said, you know, the storm's coming, but I'm looking at the radar. It's supposed to be way up above, you know, above wherever we were at. And so they're like, let's get on the boat and we'll be great. And we're going to go up to this restaurant and there's like an outdoor bar, you know, band, everything. So we're driving up. We're going slow. We're stopping. We're cruising. And again, this felt very Mercury Square Neptune. We are flying and having fun. I'm sitting at the front of the boat. I'm enjoying. So we get to the boat place. We dock the boat and we go to sit and eat and everything. And I'm looking around at the sky and I'm like, damn, you know, these people are experienced. But I'm like, this storm looks like it's pretty close. Like I'm looking over to the left. And again, we're outside and all I see is lightning and black clouds. And so they're like, let's take a vote. Should we go now or stay? And I'm like, well, uh, we're getting pretty close. I I would like to take our chances and leave or else we're going to be stuck here forever. Because they're like, we're not leaving our boat. We can't just Uber home. We're getting in the boat. So we hurry up, we leave, and instantly I am freaking out. I feel like I was on Indiana Jones. And again, maybe it's not that dramatic, but we're in the bay, and I've, there's a major storm coming. And so we take off, and right away on the boat, the flash flood warnings happen. And they're like, dun, 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 and we're staying ahead. When I'm telling you we just made it by two minutes, we just made it. We're pulling out of this place. I see the clouds and the storms behind us getting darker and darker and we're headed towards the sunlight it's probably seven o'clock at night so we're headed towards the sunlight and we're beating things it's kind of coming down a little bit but they won't stop with the flash flood warnings i'm looking behind me and it is black i'm like we just made it out there and so we go around to the one bend (laughs) and all of a sudden it is pitch black and lightning and i was like holy shit and we're the only people on the bay right now and i'm like this is it I might call my cho- my children. I don't know. I think this is it, you know. And I'm at. They're like, no, you're fine. I'm like, all right. Well, what do I do if you know if we capsize? If a wave flips us over? I'm thinking of the propeller. The propellers. I want to get like an escape plan. I'm like, do we? Do I jump before it? Do I wait till the boat flips under and then I swim away? Which direction? And they're like, oh my god. You're crazy. So when we were around to that corner, we were like, I don't want to go there. Like we got to go there. It's home. Thank God. 
you know, when you're on the bay, it's some um, some things look further away. And so when we got there, we didn't get to the roughest of it. And we made it back to the house, to the dock. And as soon as we could see the house, it started torrential pour- downpouring. You know, the waves started kicking up and the lightning started right there. And we pulled in and ran into the house. And I'm like, holy shit, that felt that was fun then. I was like, this is exciting now that we didn't die. And it felt like Indiana Jones. But I was really scared there for a little bit. I got to be honest with you. I was like, this is how it ends. I never would have thought I would be ending it on a boat. But, you know, those waves can get crazy. And it was a massive storm. I ended up going out that night on the porch to watch it. It was really beautiful. So, again, a very mercury aloof. They were sort of just partying, having fun, kind of aloof for the weather. weather. And then we ended up making in the nick of time and having like an Indiana Jones experience uh, because the waves were definitely high, too. It was crazy. So that's my little story of the weekend. You know, I like to come back with uh, some stories there with people. Okay, so this week we are going to talk about uh, Mars moving into Taurus, which happened today, and Mercury moving into Cancer, which happened today. If you can't feel it, because one of the TikTok videos I already did was that our momentum, our drive, is going to get really lazy, and we're going to get really tired, and we're not going to care about doing anything not worth our time. Like we, It's really going to be worth our time to get our momentum up to do it. And I know I felt that today. Uh, I was getting stuff done that were important to me, but things that wasn't, I did not get done. But again, just sort of sleepy. Um, the moon will be, uh, this morning was opposite Neptune, so definitely added to the aloof La La Land. I don't know if you felt that. This Saturday on the 9th, we got Mercury squared Jupiter. And Sunday the 10th, Sun sextile Uranus. So... Okay, I want to talk about that a little bit. Let's start with Mars and Taurus. Mars is debilitated in Taurus, meaning it's not really working at its highest self, or it does the exact opposite of what it normally does when it's debilitated. It is weakened there. Mars is a malefic planet. It is not naturally a happy planet. It is the one planet, you know, Mars and Saturn, that bring harder things. And Mars is the god of war. It brings destruction. It separates. It divides. It likes to divide and conquer. And it likes to take over. And it usually reveals our shadows. So when it's in Taurus, you know, we instantly go to our friendships, family, and relationships. And maybe there being some issues there. Now, again, don't freak out. It doesn't mean if you're in a relationship, you're, you know, that's going to break up or it's going to fall on hard times or anything. There, there can be a few ways that this is going to show up. Yeah, it's definitely not going to make relationships very easy, you know, on, of all kinds. Again, not just love relationships. And you might feel this more depending on if you are a Taurus, you know, you have Taurus in one of the angular houses or you have Mars in one of the angular houses. Various things like that can make this feel more. So. What we can expect from that. So again, Mars divides, it separates, it does not bring people together. And one thing that really comes, and it also brings change, but through disruption or shaking things up. It doesn't bring like a positive shift. It will, everything leads to a positive shift once we get through the work of it. However, it usually brings about sort of a very disruptive chaotic thing that happens and then you got to make a really quick change something very fast and very disruptive this automatically by sign by whole sign house uh has a little bit it's now speaking to uranus and then it will conjoin uranus by the middle of the month middle to the end of the month it will conjoin uranus and we'll talk about that next week but it already has, again, a little bit of a, a Uranian flair to it. And just for instance, Taurus Risings, you might feel like rebelling. It could be as simple as that. But it's going to be more fighting and arguing that happens. It's going to be very more fixed. It's going to be harder to want to compromise. You're going to want to stick to your, what's the word, your bones. I don't know if that's the right word. You want to stick to your, what am I searching for? Your trousers? I don't know. That's not the word either. But stick to your guns. That's the word. You want to stick to your guns. You're not listening. You're not going to be as open-minded. And if you have an opinion or a belief about something, you're going to say, no, this is how it is, and I'm not listening to what you have to say. So again, yourself or other people may be more argumentative or closed-minded or very fixed on uh, what they believe in, especially around arguments or what's happening. You know, I say arguments because Mars is an arguer. It's a war. So when we see wherever Mars goes, there brings up a very argumentative energy to it. Um, Though, with that, 
after the aggression, you know, in Taurus, we can very easily want to talk things out. It might not be easy talk. It might be hard talk and it might take hours, but we can sometimes get through to someone with patience and resilience and just keep talking things out calmly. That can definitely be something that can happen. Uh, harder Again, harder times can fall with loved ones, relationships, family, friends. We might get into a fight with someone. There might be some chaos there. Again, our shadows come up with Mars. I always say that Mars is a shadow activator. You know, we have Pluto that really brings on the shadows and sees, but Mars is the activator there. It is like the little instigating, like, bad child. (laughs) I know you're not supposed to say that you're a bad child, but you know there's some bad children out there. And so that's just there to, you know just to piss you off and to bring things out. It sometimes does that in you. And often our relationships are so hard because they're our greatest reflection into ourselves. We don't allow ourselves to see each other, ourselves as deeply as we do in a romantic partnership, which is what makes it so hard, that intimate bonding. And I know for me, my inner child comes out the most. You know, the things I'm not proud of that I do or my actions or my reactions, uh, tend to come out in the love department you know most of us when we hold that deep emotional thing to ourselves our inner child holds on to that love that emotion of feeling love so our most non um prideful moments usually happen in relationships so again if you're seeing something right now you're acting out yourself don't be so hard on yourself it is really this is what i even try to tell my kids you're always going to get in trouble always and you're going to do things wrong even as an adult The goal is to keep learning and growing and changing things, not doing certain things, you know, wrong anymore. You learn and grow, but there's always going to be something, you know, and and that's just part of life. So if you're experiencing something, you know, I I act out so many times and it's embarrassing the next day or I have some clarity and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that or said that or was this. And then I seek awareness and I try to do better the next time or not do it at all. But we have to see ourselves in that light to grow past it. So if you're having some shadows come up with this, which you're going to, just sit there. Just look at it. Allow it. Remove it. Just know that no one is perfect and your soul is here to evolve. That is important to know. When it comes to sex, our sexual energy can be... uh, you know, I think one or two ways. I mean, I think if you have a Taurus moon and it moves on, you might find yourself a little bit more sexually drained um, or not feeling like you want to have sex. This, again, or not feeling intimate or not feeling very sexy yourself. And if you do, I feel like the sex or the intimacy might be a little more animalistic, (laughs) a little more like take charge. I'm going to get this you know, and just bang it out really fast, something along those lines. But, you know, don't be surprised if you feel a little bit, uh, you know, that's not what it takes. Or maybe it will take a lot of whining and dining to get you there with this energy because, you know, Mars is slowing down the momentum and it's debilitated there. So, again, don't be surprised if if you're just like not feeling up to it and you don't know why. Mars and Taurus, that's all you need to know. So... I just want, like, something else to bring up. Hitler has a Mars and Taurus. (laughs) And I'm not to, like, you know, bring up Hitler or anything in a bad... I mean, I don't think you can bring him up without being in a bad light. But that sort of um, very fixed anger, if you get what I'm saying, that very fixed... He was also a Taurus, so, you know, he had a son in Taurus. So that very fixed way, like, this is how I see it. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to make change. And I don't care if this is going to hurt people. Like, that sort of is a very, um, like, leading the, the tough soldier in sort of vibe. I hope I'm saying that correctly with Mars as a Taurus. I think you get what I'm saying. It's very, like, leading the pact, but in a... I don't care what you say, and I don't care if I need to destroy everything to get what I want. Kind of like Vladimir Putin, sort of, a little bit of that. So, the you know, when you're feeling a little angry, you're feeling a little uh, overclamped, as my grandmother would say, you know, walk away if you can. Or just know if you are in an argument with someone and you're in that mood, just say, hey, I'm not going to win, he's not going to win, we might as well just walk away from it and cease to desist. That's definitely what's something you want to do. So we're going to talk about Mercury in Cancer. One of the things is that we are instantly going to seek more familiar um, home feeling things for comfort, if that makes sense. So if you 
are feeling distressed, you're feeling emotionally disturbed, you're upset about something because we are going to feel a little bit more of our emotions on a deeper level, you might quick go to, you know, a soup that your mother always made you or, you know, I know some people as adults that still no judgment and some of them are my friends that still have their like baby animal or blanket. And as a, you know, Gemini Virgo, I don't hold on to any of that shit, but they, ha- they have that. Maybe you just want to be cuddled up to that for a while. Or maybe you want to call your family, have a conversation with your grandmother. Something that brings you comfort, that bring you comfort as a kid will come up or you'll seek out. Or if you can't figure out why you don't feel settled, maybe find something like that to seek comfort. Um, you know, our brain will also try to see what's important. What are important relationships? What are closely tied to us? You know, cancers like people that are closely tied to them and they keep them in a, in their life for a long time, even though they're always fluctuating with their emotions because their emotions are so unstable. Uh, they like the people that end up coming into their lives and are real and stable. They like to keep that there. So seeking and holding on and reaching out to those people that are very, very important, um, is going to be very important. Also, sorry, I was just thinking about, <laughs> this is ADHD. I was just thinking about how I forgot to wish my friend a happy birthday in that exact moment because she's a cancer. And I was thinking about how important she is. And she's been in my life since I was a kid. And she still like shows up for me. And I'm like, shit, I got to wish her a happy birthday. So sorry for that sidetrack from there. But we're going to see what's important to us. You know, that relationship, the person I'm talking to, she's a dear. She's very important to me. And she's always made sure that I was important. That is a cancer, cancerian trait there. And it will definitely bring out our more sensitive side. Uh, We'll feel fluctuations with emotions up and down. But when we seek that, again, we're going to want to seek a very stable, um, something that's been there giving us comfort for a long time. But we're going to be more in touch with our sensitive side, and we're going to be going fluctuating up and down. I think the full moon that will be happening in Capricorn, we'll talk about that next week, we'll definitely feel that a little more intensely with Mercury being in Cancer. Now, some of the things Mercury rules, right? It's, It's hermaphrodite. It is two sides. It takes on the characteristics of whatever planet it is closest to and and the signs. It really takes on whatever sign it is in. And it has two sides to everything. It rules a truth and a falsehood. It conceals and it reveals. It's rapidly changing and moving. You know, it rules manipulation and deception, yet also rules awareness and consciousness. It conveys news of both kind. You know, it also rules exchanging goods, money. We get messages. You know, we might, again, have to process or get some messages around our family, the way we, something with our family, the way we go about our own personal family, or even some inner child family pain that we have there, or growth. It doesn't have to be pain. It could be good or bad. We're going to get some messages or awareness there. So again, right out this week, uh, and definitely right out this next month, the end of the month will be a little bit more of a dramatic time for Mars and Taurus. Uh, in the beginning, we'll want to save our energy for that. <laughs> so this week, you can expect it to be a little bit of a slower week, a slower pace, um, wanting to enjoy things wholly instead of rushing through it. We don't, again, even though the moon moves all the time, a lot of the part of the moon is very solid. It's like a solid mass of water that is at a lot of times very calm. So I don't know where it's going with that. You guys get the point. So we'll be talking about that. Stay in the waters Stay in the emotions, seek comfort, seek love, seek home, seek things that are important to you. I think that's good for the week. Again, at the end of the week, we have uh, Mercury square Jupiter, and we got Jupiter still in Aries, and it's going to start retrograding soon in a couple weeks. So Mercury squared Jupiter in in Cancer and Aries can definitely bring about a very emotional fight. Maybe an emotional fight with siblings, family. One of those fights where it doesn't end, like it doesn't end your relationship. And I'm talking again, not just romantic, all kinds of relationships. But it definitely clears the air and it's intense. Some, sometimes that can be like a really strong emotion or something you're mad at with your family that comes out of nowhere. And you got to handle that the way you see best. It could also be feel very like you and your sister get into a major fight 
But then afterwards, there's a lot of healing and crying and understanding, like almost immediately after the fight or the next day. It's going to have a little bit of that feel. But again, don't be surprised if there are some deep emotions that come up, some wounds around relationships or the pain of people um, who hurt you when you gave all in your relationship. That all can definitely show up. And when the sun sextiles Uranus, there can just be a little more energy to want to get our path or things done on Sunday, as well as a little bit of shocking, you know, revelations or something along those lines, especially Uranus being a Taurus, like, I don't know, maybe a family member, no, that'd be the moon, I was going to say maybe a family member like comes out as trans or something like that, but that can more so maybe um, all of a sudden on Saturday, water main breaks at your job and then su- and Monday you don't have to go to work. <laughs> that might be more of an example for sun sextile Uranus, but it won't feel as bad. But if you get into a fight with someone this weekend, just know that it should heal up pretty fast or it should lead to a really big healing time for the both of you. Whew, that is the weekly awakening podcast. I'm going to do an episode next week, guys, and then I'm going away for two weeks to Italy. Yes, I'm leaving the country for the first time. I am very excited, and so I'll try to do a pretty extra long episode next week and get it out to you guys before I leave. Maybe I'll do two episodes or something, and that should hold you guys over for two weeks because I will not be doing any recording in Italy. I will just be enjoying the scenery. Uh, Thank you, everyone, who continues again to listen to this. I love you all, and I hope you have a fabulous week. Love you. Bye.